Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So it is finally time for the Quest for Every Halo Hero episode four. And this has actually been edited by Jacob. He's a new guy to the channel. He actually approached me and he just wants to learn a lot about editing. And he understands my editing style really well and just wanted to edit one of my videos for fun. So he's actually been doing this project. It's why it's taken episode four a while to come out because we wanted to make sure it was up to scratch. We've had some exporting various issues. That's why it's only in 720p, but I wanted to get it out and I wanted to just say thanks to Jacob. He's gonna be just learning and putting out the rest of these hunt for every halo hero videos i can't wait to see where the partnership goes so thanks jacob enjoy the video guys hello once again youtube and welcome back to the domain episode four we're getting on now we're getting a little bit old episode four of the quest for every halo hero in this year-long episodic series we will be finding in every nook and cranny of america china wherever we need every single halo hero i will stop at nothing to get them all. Gotta catch them all. So, in the last episode, we had the theme Spartan Reinforcements and we unboxed the Athlon, Soldier, Vector, Gungnir, Mark VII, Dutch, and Centurion. And yes, Dutch is not a Spartan, but he just crowned off the episode because he just looks gorgeous. I'm so happy to get that guy in my team. If you're new to this series, every episode we break open a box to try and complete our entire Halo Halo Heroes collection. The stakes are pretty high. In episode one, we had loads of Noble Team. Episode two, some series five, the most legendary and rarest series. And episode three, Dutch and a load of Spartans. So I told you at the end of the last episode that the theme for episode four would be enemies of the UNSC. So you predicted what those could possibly be in the comments of the last video. We're gonna break open this parcel and see if you're right. As always, let's take a closer look. All right, Spartans, I do not disappoint on this series. I'm not gonna start today. We've got two sealed Halo heroes and then one, two, three, four, unsealed and yes i blurred it out so you can't see just yet i want you to predict what these are can you make it out from the little outlines i'm not sure we got six halo heroes today the enemies of the unsc and we're gonna start uh, we'll start small you know we'll start simple with a Storm Jackal Miner. Because, you know, the Jackals, I think the Jackals sometimes get overlooked in the Halo universe. They're actually one of the main focuses of both the Shadows of Reach, Fall of Reach, uh, even Halo the Flood. So the Jackals, you know, I think they do have a special place in a lot of people's hearts. And they're also sometimes one of the most difficult to kill, especially if you don't have the right weapon. They'll just hide behind that shield all day and you are done for. I know the Storm Jackal is not everybody's favorite in design. I know that the Storm Covenant is not the favorite of, of many in general. You know, I remember the day. I remember the day I was sat in my uh, living room and I looked online. Everybody was sending me pictures of the, the first previews of the Storm Covenant from Halo 4. Everybody was just going nuts, man. They were going absolutely nuts saying, oh, they ruined the Covenant. They destroyed my game. Like before it had even uh, been released. And yes, I mean, those kind of people still all those years later will say that, hey, you know, 343 ruined my game. I've never been in that park. I've always thought that Halo 4 was an amazing game, like such high quality. I've always been a big Halo 4 defender on like an enormous amount of reasons. Give me the Midnight Strike broadsword run any day, man. Like that is classic Halo. But, uh, you know, we, we don't have to go into Halo 5 Guardians today. That's a whole different story. This Jackal Miner has a lot to offer. Apparently, he apparently falling out arms. Whoa, 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 what happened? They both came out at the same time. Uh, yeah, he has a lot to offer. Maybe I just didn't pop them in properly, including this skin. I don't think there's almost any characters out there, or almost any figures that have this transitioning skin color. It's very impressive, honestly. This like dark tan leading to light tan. I really like it. And they've done the same number on his head. The mouth, and I found this with my original Jackal Miner. The mouth is never very 
good. Like, that, that's, that's awful. Like, that's like he's been brushing his teeth for way too long. And then his mom walks into the room and says, it's bedtime. He turns around and said, what? He's got a mouthful of toothpaste, man. That needler matches his, his head, honestly. The, the needler does work really well. I know everybody's thinking, well, Simon, why haven't you even mentioned the shield yet? That's the best part. I'm building to it, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll build up to that in my own time. We'll pop that into his torso. And there we are. The Jackal Miner with... Yes, should I say the best shield ever made? Look at that thing. Look at it. Wow. It's just outstanding, isn't it? Like, I don't know if every one of them is different. I guess we could compare. Maybe they're the exact same. Yeah, I think they're the exact same print in every way, but I mean, that's completely fine. They're so, so detailed anyway. It doesn't matter at all. Yes, the Jackal Miner. I already have one of these, but you, you need two of these in your collection. Come on. And those pink highlights as well. Solid figure. Let's move on to the next one. We're going to build up now, building up to the big baddies. The next we've got from one of the most recent Halo Hero series. It's the Elite Warlord. This thing, along with the Brute Chieftain, just has the most outrageous headpiece and general design. It's so Halo Reach-esque. It just reminds me of all the old Halo Elite Generals. Like, it's so nice. It, it feels so like a return to form with the, the general art design. This head also, one of the only ones I've ever seen like this, transitions color between the different parts of his head, which it, it really shows you what Mega Constructs is trying to get at when they have a sort of bare skin and then also so an undersuit. Alongside his ridiculous helmet is equally ridiculous shoulders. I am in love every time. And it's also got the OG energy sword, which never thought I'd see it return, honestly, once they got the sort of razor design. But no, it sits back and more bold and powerful than ever. Like, this is... Such an exceptional figure. So we've started the enemies of the UNSC with a Jackal Miner and Elite Warlord, but now we've got to amp up the pressure. We're going to go for some big leaders now. We've got three leaders of different factions fighting against the UNSC, and we're going to start with this one here. From Halo Heroes, this is... Sese Refumi. Sese Refumi. And yeah, I, I know he technically doesn't really fight against the UNSC, I guess. He's more just opposing the Covenant. I mean, he definitely doesn't fight against the UNSC, but he would still be classed as an enemy and uh, show no mercy if they encountered him on the battlefield. And yes, Sese Refumi, he's been, he's been all the talk recently because he's in the 20th anniversary pack and he's in the Heretic Banshee, which is a real surprise that he was in both. Um, I was certainly surprised at first and I really wish they'd added a heretic grunt to that set but I'm definitely done complaining about that uh that banshee set uh, there are a lot of great things about it and the alt build looks fantastic um I would have still liked a fully gold banshee look at that as well that is that is the same I would honestly think that was Jazzware. If I had no scale to compare it to, I, I could think that was Jazzware. It's so detailed, man. Like, it's so detailed. To think they have come this way in only, uh, like, 10, uh, maybe 12 years now, that is so much progress for a company, for a design company. For Mega Constructs to be able to make this highly detailed of a figure, like, outstanding bravo guys bravo and this face mask also just snugly fits on really well designed <laughs> there it is where's where, where where are you going and uh, that inserts in very nicely. I would have liked for colored plasma rifles with this figure, most definitely, but with all of the new molds and all of the attention to detail with everything else, I was certainly not mad. I realize now you actually have to take the back off and uh, sort of position this in place and uh, I guess insert it over the top. I've never actually built one of these because you don't, you don't build it when you get the Halo Hero, right? You just have it pre-assembled. So this is a journey, but that, wow. Wow, that inserts in really nicely. Hey, look at that. I got a new appreciation for, for the detail there. So this is one of the best figures to display uh, with this hovering base plate. The best example of why Mega Constructs should have kept this, uh, this really detailed base plate. There he is. Wow, one of the most detailed Halo Mega Constructs figures. One of the most detailed Halo heroes. I love those green lights in the back of his jump pack. All of the different buttons and gizmos on the front of his chest. Really, really nice figure. And such a great one to just add to uh, the general overarching lore of Mega Constructs Halo. Right, so that's one big baddie, leader of a faction. And here's another. This is the leader of the Storm Covenant, one of the most important players in Halo 4 and Spartan Ops. 
It's Julem Dharma. Oh yeah, buddy. I know everybody's really mad about how he was killed off in Halo uh, 5, and I, I do get that. I know the point of killing him off was to just show off how cool a Cyrus team was, but I, I don't think it really worked. Also, look at how amazing the transition between blue and AC that is. Like, so cool, so cool. So we'll clip that in. We've got, again, very nice transitional AC on his helmet, and on his arms, you can compare the two arms, one's fully AC ones, not AC at all, and it's obvious which respective side they go in. Julem Dharma, I have said it before, and I'm saying it a lot in this series, uh, I, I should stand by one. Julem Dharma, I believe, is the most highly detailed Mega Constructs figure we've ever got. I, I definitely think that's the one I stand by. Like, this transitional AC is such a league above anything else Mega Constructs has ever tried to do with AC, and it just works so well. It, like, it, it goes off without a hitch. And it's interesting because in the last episode, I talked about how Mega Construct should just continue to re-release characters just all the time, like really important characters. And this is an example of how you can do it. Just re-release the character, but make him different. Like re-release Dutch with battle damage. Re-release Carter with, you know, blood all over his armor after he's been shot in the Pelican. These things are very doable and an easy way of re-releasing things, but then also convincing people to buy them again. Julem Dharma, what a phenomenal figure. Phenomenal. Then we've got two more sealed characters for today. Now, this Jackal, uh, he's got a bit of a problem. He's feeling a bit lonely. So why don't we get him some reinforcements? We got another Jackal Miner. Cause literally why not? You can have a third Jackal Miner in your collection. Like they're just cannon fodder, they're useful. Don't tell me I don't need another Jackal Miner. I think it's a great addition. You can never, you know, have enough basic covenant and I'll always take an opportunity to get like nice, cheap, but super, super highly detailed enemies, uh, especially just infantry. So this Jackal looks great. He suffers from the toothpaste as all of them do, but that is my third and final Jackal Miner in my collection. Sese and Julem Dharma are very important elite leaders, but. It's it's time for a monkey. It's time for one of our brutes. This is Atriox's right-hand man in Halo Wars 2. It's Decimus. I'm happy to have him. This is Series 4, Madsen, Dare, Cutter, Spartan Argus, and Spartan Wetwork. These two I'm going to see very soon in a future video, and... Yeah, I've got most of these. Argus is the only one I'm missing from this series. I will get him soon. So here's Decimus. I love that beard so good. And this red armor, the dark red suits him very well. Banished red, any kind of banished red is excellent. Here's his signature gravity hammer in hand. And yes, you may notice I have already got a Decimus uh, before, but... This Decimus, while he does seem to have slightly different colored face paint, this Decimus is missing its base plate. I got him pretty cheap because he didn't have a base plate, so I've always been looking to get the base. I'll be selling this one secondhand on my website sometime soon, but this one is staying in my collection for good. This is a very menacing Decimus, and I want to get him straight next to Atriox. They make such a perfect duo, though why is Atriox's hammer so tiny? I will never get over that, man. I will never stop complaining about Atriox's hammer. Okay, here's Decimus, the banished red. Everything about this figure just works. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is one, two, three, four, five, six enemies of the UNSC. And these figures, you can't really see them all up close and personal in one shot. So let's back out and review what we got today. Many new characters both old and new are joining my collection today, and the only thing they have in common, they are hated by the UNSC. We've got the Elite Warlord, two Jackal Miners, Julem Dharma, Sese Refumi, and Decimus. Now this is a bit of a funny one because all six of these figures I already own. But this is the quest for every Halo hero and the quest today was to get this base plate for Decimus. The rest of the stuff will either be used as cannon fodder, diorama materials, or go for sale on my website. So this is a beautiful addition and like I'm not being funny, but this is starting to look uh, a little wild now. We're four episodes in and that is an absurd 
absurd number of Halo Mega Constructs. So this was another episode with the domain of the quest for every Halo hero. Episode four brought us six characters, two duplicates, which makes three of them now. But next episode, we'll be getting some brand new characters to add to my collection. The theme for episode five is Halo Wars. Halo Wars, what figures could they possibly be? Drop your predictions in the comments down below for the heroes and the villains of Halo Wars. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for tuning in today. You have an awesome day. You stay awesome. You stay safe. And all of today's haul is signing off.